Hello everyone, welcome back to the Remen Gordo YouTube channel. It's primarily final week in the AFL final series for 2022. How are you Gordo? Feeling really, really good Remy. Um, I'm excited to get in for this one. It's prelim week, we wait all year for this, and here we are. Here we are. We'll kick it off with the semi-finals review. Uh, this was started off at the MCG with Brisbane downing Melbourne by 13 points. How did you see this one, Gordo? Oh, I thought... I thought Brisbane were fantastic in the second half. It really was a tale of two halves in this. Melbourne got off to a really fast start. Yeah. Brisbane fought back, changed their game style, and yeah, it was fantastic. It was, wasn't it? It was a difference of two halves. It was Melbourne's first half in particular, and then Brisbane's pressure rating lifted, and the second half lifted them to a win. Um, any place in particular that caught your eye, Gordo? I thought Jared Berry was outstanding, particularly after half-time. He came out with that matchup on Oliver, and usually you see a tagger not, not get too much of the footy themselves, but Berry was outstanding. Yeah. He won a lot of his own footy and really nullified Clayton Oliver's influence. Absolutely. Not many players have been able to do that this year, and uh, Berry just took advantage of Oliver in that second half in particular. Um, I'd like to make a mention too to Eric Hipwood, unbelievable, four goals on the big stage at the semi-finals on the MCG goal, it wasn't that spectacular. Yeah, he was under a bit of pressure, we had Danaher go out before the game, congratulations to Joe Danaher yeah. by the way. Um, but yeah, it, Eric Hipwood really had to lift and he sure did. He did, and in particular, I thought there was the pressure rating from Brisbane went up a notch, but there was a certain player, wasn't there? And his name's Charlie Cameron. What a magnificent second half he played. He really did. He came out at that three out of three quarter time huddle, um, and he was dancing on to the music at the MCG, <laughs> and you could just tell he was in the zone. And yeah. then he kicked that one from the pocket, and yeah, didn't he celebrate it? Gee, that lifted the crowd, didn't it? Sure it? Did. In the final dying moments, uh, that was spectacular to see on TV in particular. Um, but we'd like to make mention also to Clayton Oliver and Christian Petrarca. They did all they could in the first half, but unfortunately they lacked a bit of polish and um, endurance got them in the end in the second half. No, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Um, we'll move on now though to Collingwood and Frio at the MCG. Uh, the Collingwood getting up by 20 points, Gordo. Uh, your prediction from last week, unbelievable. Yes, yeah, spot on this week. Um, <laughs> Collingwood were outstanding in the, in the first quarter particularly. They, they kicked the first four goals of the game. It was going to be very difficult for Fremantle. It was. The same thing as last week happened to them. Um, and I just thought Collingwood were really damaging and they didn't let the Dockers get back into the game. No, they didn't, did they? Their pressure from the first bounce was elite, wasn't it? Um, they just didn't allow Frio to gain momentum throughout the match and their, their pressure rating was just through the roof. And I'd like to make special mention to intercepts in particular from uh, the likes of Jeremy Howe, Darcy Moore, these type of players. And then... Uh, Ginevan, Dugowie and Crisp uh, within the forward line and midfield, didn't they all team up well? Yeah, they were, they were great around goals, Collingwood. They did miss six straight, but you knew who was going to answer that. This <laughs> man behind us, Jack Ginevan, he was fantastic, kicking three goals of his own, leading goal kicker on the night. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, but Brayshaw and Sarong for Frio with 32 and 34 disposals in particular, did all they could for Frio. And David Mundy, what an incredible player. Special mention to him on an incredible career, Gorda. Yeah, absolutely. But I think Freo will be quite disappointed with this one. Um, yeah. Earlier on in the season, they looked like they were a real chance of going deep into the finals. They did. Knocked out in the semi. Especially the that Melbourne victory throughout the year at the MCG. You yeah. just felt like they were on. Yeah, definitely. But Collingwood, they're red hot, aren't they? This yeah. will be a fantastic matchup against Sydney yes. this weekend. Oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we'll get into the uh, preliminary final previews now, Gordo, and it's your Catters up against the Brisbane Lions at the MCG Friday night. Yeah, how good is this game going to be? Oh. The last time these two met, I think there was about three points in it yeah. um, down in Geelong. So I'm really keen to see how they go. Um, Geelong have been training hard, they've been training with intensity. Um, I was down there on Friday, and yeah, they looked really good around the, around the stoppage. Yeah, I, I'm keen to see what Geelong... Um, dish up Friday night because they've only played one game in around 26 to 27 days I believe um, when this game bounced down on Friday night so will they have that momentum in the first quarter and um, keep their winning ways? Yeah I think as long as they don't get blown away in that first quarter or if they get out to a bit of a lead they'll be able to hang on yeah. in this one. Any, any players in particular? Yeah I, I feel like 
Charlie Cameron again um, for Geelong to watch. Uh, if he can get off the leash in. Um, especially the second half, or the f uh, first half in particular, it will go a long way for Brisbane winning this match, just with the pressure rating. Um, and whether, if Joe Danaher comes back and Eric Hipwood, I feel like one of them needs to fire for them to have a real crack at a victory here, don't you reckon? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I, I'm, I'm particularly looking at Jeremy Cameron. Can he do it two or three weeks yeah, in a row? Yeah, can he do it? Um, is it Dangerfield's game? He's built for a preliminary yeah. bomb, so I'm really keen to see how he goes. Yeah, I, I'm interested too to see Dangerfield's response from that um, qualifying final. Uh, got beaten by Dugowie, so whether he can stand up, we'll wait and see. Um, also, in particular, I'm interested to see how Tom Hawkins goes. Um, Jeremy Cameron's one of the main uh, stakeholders up forward, but can Hawkins go under the radar and kick a good four to five goals? It'll be interesting. Yeah, this, I can't wait to see this one on yeah. Friday night. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there too. Make sure you tune in. Yeah, make sure. All right, we'll move on now to the uh, second preliminary final. We've got uh, Sydney and Collingwood at the SCG on Saturday Twilight Football. Yeah, what a, what a great time slot for footy, yeah. I, I think, anyway. Um, I'm keen to see how Sydney, Sydney go in, in this one. They've obviously had a break. Um, Collingwood, they'll, they'll run into this one red hot. Completely different contest to the last time they met, I think. Yeah, so Sydney got up by 27 points uh, in the home and away season at the SCG, but it, it's a different um, ball game, isn't it, finals? So will we see Collingwood ramp up that pressure and destroy um, Sydney, or Sydney be able to handle that at the SCG? Yeah, I think Craig McRae has been fantastic during the week to to point out that his team are going to be up for it. They're going to be in for a fight, and they're yeah. in it to win the premiership. Yeah. So I think that just adds an extra an extra layer to this. Absolutely. Um, also, in particular, um, Tom Papley, Chad Warner, and these young guns for Sydney will they be able to outlast Collingwood um, at the in the especially in the first and second half? Can these young guys stand up? Yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how they go. Um, it, same with Collingwood, pressure on the young guys yeah. at Collingwood. But um, I think with the finals experience of Penabry, yeah. who knows? You can't buy finals experience. Even just going back to Fremantle's loss in the semi-final, I feel like it could be a real factor for Sydney. Um, they haven't had too much finals experience, but um, this is where Collingwood, with the likes of Dugowie and Penabry, as you say, it could um, hold them in good stead late in this game. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll ask you, Rendo, can I get can I get a tip on this game first? Yeah. So with Sydney, I believe they'll be too strong at the SCG. I think uh, they're going to come out firing, and uh, it's going to be too much for Collingwood to handle. I believe, um, even though they've been magnificent all year, I do see Sydney winning this by around 19 points. I'll, I'll say. How about you, Gorda? I'm going to go against you in this one. I'm, I'm going to tip Collingwood by 10. I just have a feeling that Collingwood aren't finished um, oh. and they've got one more in them. And to yeah. beat Sydney, what a, what a fantastic effort that would be. Whoever yeah. comes up against the winner of this one um, might be in some real strife in the grand final. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, Sydney, the one to look out for, especially in the MCG, as well as Collingwood. Um, unbelievable it will be. Yeah, so we're missing one more, we're missing one more tip. Can I... Can I get your tip yeah. for Geelong versus Brisbane at the MCG? So, on yeah, we'll go back to that match on Friday night. I believe Geelong's um, firepower up forward will be too strong, and um, I feel like they'll run away with this match, winning by 38 points. I'm, I'm going to agree with you here. I think I think Geelong's forward line is, is definitely their, their strong point, but they've been fantastic uh, defensively all over the ground. Yeah. I just can't see Brisbane kicking a high enough score to win. I'm going to tip Geelong by 22. Geelong by 22. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, it'll be um, definitely one to watch as well. Uh, two cracking primarily finals. We can't wait for these, Gordo. I'd just like to get uh, another tip from you for player of the finals. How have you, have you changed your tip at all for this week? I think I might have to with Clayton Oliver, <laughs> um, his side being knocked out. So you've gone with Lockie Neal. Yeah, I'm in, sticking in with past. Neal. I, I, I don't know. I think I might also have to, to go with Lockie Neal in this one. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting the next week though to see whether they can get over the line. Otherwise, I might have to change my tip for next week. Um, but yeah, Lockie Neal this week, I just believe he's been outstanding this final series. And for the for the Premiership, are you still sticking with the Cats? 
Yes, I am. I feel like they've been the best team all year and I, I believe they'll get the job done on Friday night and march into that grand final. No worries. But How they, about yourself, Gordo? Oh, I, I'm also going to say the Cats. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really hoping. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go this week. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Alright, thanks everyone for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this week three Primary Final uh, special. And uh, we look forward to next week, Gordo, the Grand Final channel. Grand Final show. Um, what an exciting time. So we'll find out who's playing in the granny and, and be back with you next Tuesday night. Yes. Thanks everyone for watching. Cheers.